You're on. Hi, good morning. Uh, it is Monday, November 26th. This is the continuation of the Tuckerborough Board of Selectmen work session. It was preceded by a non-public session. And uh, we're here to deal with several matters, the first of which is to <coughs> Uh, talk with the, uh, Alba Architects about their proposal to do uh, police facility work. Come on to the table, folks. Thank you. So we're welcome to the we, downtown. Yeah, yeah, we, we didn't Thank just you. anticipate uh, any formal. Presentation, okay. but maybe you can tell just start off by telling us a little bit about your firm and sure and uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, happy to. <coughs> um, excuse me. Uh, we're, we're a relatively small firm. Uh, Phil and I are principals. Um, we're kind of largely based up in uh, Woodstock and North Woodstock. Uh, although Phil lives down in multiple directions, so we can have a satellite office down here, so to speak. Um, but yeah, we've uh, run our own firm for. Uh, a little over eight years now. Prior to that, both had uh, substantial experience with other New Hampshire firms as well as both work um, overseas. Uh, I was actually born and raised in the north of Scotland, so that's where I did all my education and worked in the UK for a number of years in Scotland and London. And I um, also worked in, in Scotland for 11 or so years um, before I settled here. So, uh, I said we're um, a firm that kind of prides ourselves on our ability to um, adapt and be, be agile to different clients' needs. We find that differs considerably from client to client. Uh, we work for quite a number of municipalities, uh, typically smaller municipalities like yourselves, um, but also with you know, a range of not for profits uh, as well as larger commercial clients. Uh, you know, our work uh, fairly diverse. You know, covers, I would say, probably predominantly, you know, 70%, 70% commercial, um, and we retain about 30% residential work. Um, again, that, that varies, but um, done very small consultation projects right up to, you know, not million dollar uh, developments. Uh, I think the most recent one we completed was actually up in uh, Berlin. We completed a $6.6 million renovation of an old school building up there. Um, so I said, um, but the being a principals are ourselves, uh, we maintain constant contact and all the work. So you know, if it's something you know you choose to work with us, you will work with us from start to completion. It'll be the same people, uh, and the same people doing the work throughout. Uh, we are, um, I said, fairly versatile, and think we can adapt to that. We we employ what, what we consider probably some of the more um, cutting edge aspects of the technology that's available to us. Uh, we find that to be very helpful to uh, our clients to convey uh, ideas, both written and graphically. Um, so that's uh, definitely something we, we aspire to, to work towards. Um, that Phil wants to kind of just <coughs> talk about that? Or? Um, thanks, Stuart. So we've seen the two of us. We've got considerable experience with over 40, 50, close to 50 years experience combined. Um, we've done a huge range of projects. Um, uh, one of the downsides for people look for companies that have experience specifically in the project that they're doing, but I would argue that um, architects are taught how to help to um, find their way with a new, every new project and approach it as a, a new project as well as bringing in their experience. Um, and we do have a fair amount of experience in municipal work. Um, although it's not, we've only worked in one police station, but I think we still have relevant experience. Um, and um, I guess one of the, the things, at being a small firm, we have very low overhead, and although our proposal is probably not exceptionally com um, competitive compared to others, I think on the, in the long term we would find that we would be much more competitive for a full, a full service um, if you went that route. That's my two cents. Yeah, I think I would just add, you know, that certainly probably most 
relevant to what you're going to be looking at here is we did recently undertake works to the uh, town of Thornton police station and town offices. Uh, they were a very similar setup to you and they were kind of co-joined buildings so I had to deal with some of the intricacies of just logistics of dealing with that. Um, but yeah, we went through the kind of planning stages and they did uh, do substantial work to their police station to bring it up into kind of, kind of code. Uh, we subsequently went back actually because they received additional grant funding to upgrade their emergency operations center as well as add additional target hardening and bulletproofing in. So, um, you know, they've become a repeat client for us. So I think that kind of is a bit of um, kind of testament. The same with, we just have um, recently very completed a very similar process with the town of Conway. We've worked with them again on, on several different, I think we've done three different feasibility studies for them now, um, which went through a very similar process to what we're talking about here. I mean, it was, uh, the most recent one was the recreation center where we did, we, we uh, <coughs> spent a lot of time up front with them, which was kind of critical path to us to understand their needs, because that really becomes the foundation for everything going forward from there. Um, so that took the form of obviously uh, understanding the space they're in, but talking with the different officials and different representatives to really get a sense of what that is and what, they, what their current needs are, as well as uh, you know, we, we projected as best we could out the next 20 to 25 years. So what we're presenting then, or we summarize with a you know, building program effect that says, you know, in theory, all things being equal, this will meet your needs going forward for the next 25, 30 years. Uh, the second stage of that was very similar to what we're proposing here, which was conditions assessment. We actually did full conditions assessment of their existing facilities, so that included um, us from an architectural standpoint, code review, as well as structural, mechanical, electrical, fire protection. Again, our, our team kind of uh, did that, that whole investigation. And we looked at, again, very similar to what you're considering, renovation of the existing facility, as well as new construction on an alternate site. So we brought in, and again, we named them on this team. Um, we've worked well with uh, Cobb Hill Construction, their construction manager group, but they provide us uh, with services on, on real-time cost estimating, mm -hmm. uh, which is a little um, more accurate and reliable than uh, us just looking at historical data. Uh, we tend to find, especially right now, the price of materials are fluctuating so much, uh, they're mm -hmm. running costs much more on real-time labor and material costs than us saying, well, you know, RS means is it's going to be X per square foot for this type of facility, and that's the average over the last 20 years. We don't find that holds true quite so much, just in this market that's moving around so much. Um, and that actually went through, they did the last time meeting, actually approved to go forward with one of the options, so actually later this week we're uh, going out to bid for the actual works on that project now, so that's going to be implemented and up and running by next summer. Great. That's in Conway? That's in Conway, yes. They actually, they elected to, uh, the recreation program was run out of the old Pine Tree School. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually elected to abandon that facility and it's, they're moving into, um, they had mothballed part of the Kennett Middle School. Right. Um, so they had you know, 30,000 square feet. They signed um, a lease with the school district to use exactly. that space. Exactly. Right? So we get to renovate that space for their needs. So uh, that was the favorite option of the um, study. Yeah, we had three options. So we had renovate existing, build new, or move into the middle school. Four, actually, because it was a entirely new as well. All right. We, did, so we yes. did three options before they brought the school into the, right. into the mix. Because, yeah, the, the, and did you, the time in school. Part of the, the, the and I, sorry. Just, um, all of the... Estimates or proposals. Yeah. It's there's a significant amount of public meeting time Absolutely. that happen. So I didn't see that factored in, but I'm hoping you understand that. Yes, you're going to present it building a lot better than the three of us. Absolutely. So. Uh, no, with all the municipalities we work with, yes, we assume there are work sessions like this. There's public presentation meetings. So yes, that's built into our our cost and understanding that there's, yeah. there's a certain amount of that needs to happen. Significant program meetings with the users and the intended users of the facility. Uh, There's yeah. one right here. Yeah. Good morning, how are you? Good. Uh, because yeah, in all honesty, as, as I mentioned, you know, the, the more information you collaboratively can get together with at the beginning mm -hmm. means everything going forward from there is just more meaningful. Right. Um, so that for us is it was really the kind of critical stage. Um, because yeah, if, if we if we don't establish that properly, then everything going forward is a little flawed. 
Uh, and I don't think within our proposal we prescribe a certain amount. We understand, you know, that there's going to be yeah. ups and downs. So you know, we we accommodate you know, our, our, you know, we wouldn't um, prescribe and say it's it's X. It's just it's what it takes from our side of things to to make that work. So I said, well, that's work sessions, public meetings, select board meetings, um, whatever is needed. So how far north in Scotland? Uh, pretty far north. Are you familiar with Scotland at all? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I grew up just outside a town called Elgin. Okay. So it's yeah. Yeah, you drive three and a half, four hours north from Edinburgh. You'll my hit right. I've been to Elgin. Okay, great. But my brother-in-law and sister have a house in Inverness. Okay. Yeah. So it's about an hour away. Yeah. 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 Actually, it was, it was, yeah, his mom lives in Elgin. She's oh, great. Got some kind of sister living down there. Huh? No, that's that's pretty much where I grew up. Nice. So on your, uh, we got your estimate on that, yep. or your proposal on the fees. What's your uh, going forward? What's your percentage for? What, let's say we award you the video. Now we're going to build a building. Oh. You're not going to work for nineteen thousand dollars. No, and and no, honestly, we we don't use percentages because okay. uh, we find it to be um, again every every client, every project is different. So if we were to say at the conclusion of this, right, we need to go forward, we need to develop construction documents, uh, we literally sit down and we, we kind of back into it in some sense and say, okay, here's what the deliverables are going to have to be. So we then compile that and then we, we basically ascertain or assign time to each of those deliverables uh, and we break that down per hour so we then have an understanding. So that gives us a sense of how much work effort we think it is from our side of things. Mm -hmm. um, we do use a percentage as a check on that to see where it's falling. Uh, I mean, typically on, on larger projects, we found our, if you want a percentage, we've been kicking around you know five to 6% for the team. So that's us, structural, MEP, um, fire protection. Uh, normally specialized consultants aren't necessarily in that if we needed that. Um, but as I said, we shy away from percentages um, because that's, that's... I guess in the final analysis, yes. that's fine, but going into the deal. Oh, sure. You know, it, I don't want to wake up, you know, six weeks from now and find out that it works out to about 12%, no. at which point things really start to no. get skewed. Um, so. And I'd be happy to give you references on clients that could yeah. attest to where our percentages normally fall. Um, and I and I appreciate the fact that you do it on deliverables. That's a great way to do things. But I just <coughs> we need to have some comfort as to you know if we're going to go yeah, in this we, direction. We fall in, um, and generally it's kind of our um, our consultants who push us <laughs> even that high. Yeah. Uh, we feel, we tend to be very competitive even compared to our consultants. So the five to six range could probably be more definitive if, if it was just us or if we're more like two and a half. Um, so. And you, I, I meant, you know, just jumping around a little bit, but you, you mentioned um, sustainability, energy efficiency, that sort of thing. Is that in-house that you're doing that designing or is that through some other engineering firms or how do you, how do you come up with it? Well, both I, myself and our MEP consultants are lead certified mm -hmm. um, and although we don't have a lot of call for it we haven't had a lot of clients who want to follow the lead process we've kind of adopted that as um, a method to achieve an energy efficient environmentally sound building for any project because it's there's less hoops to go through if you don't actually get the lead certification right. but it's a good guide on how to approach well, the project we, we're going to get some pushback on what's it going to cost to run this thing for the next Right. Or, or so the for the next yeah. nine years. Right. So it, it would be nice to know, or at least we're making an effort. <clears throat> and we're certainly going to be proactive to encourage, if you work with us, we'll be proactive to encourage you to can at least consider the long-term cost of running the building right. versus the upfront cost. That's always the, the, the kicker is the re return of investment. Um, right. but well, it's a problem when you have annual budgets. Right. You know, mm -hmm. the Warren articles that you're not looking into the future, but we need to do more of that. But we do specifically make an effort that, regardless of the primary goals of the, the project, is to, to give the most efficient building that we can achieve within the client's budget and goals. And sometimes people <coughs> are residential and more interested in a very expensive kitchen. 
than a mm -hmm. high-efficiency yeah. boiler or whatever, but um, we will we'll present at every step of the way uh, alternatives. alternatives that can uh, contribute to that success. And that's actually where it's helpful so that we bring in a construction manager normally as part of our feasibility team because they can give us guidance so that type of or some of those components are actually integral right from the very beginning so it's not like all right we've done a schematic now we're going to figure out what these add-ons may be we can be very prescriptive and say we want to include this right from the beginning so it's part of the conversation it's not an afterthought and we find that to be very helpful and just because yes, we understand that at a certain point in time <coughs> there's a budget and right. you get to work with that budget. And that does that in your history or, or previous projects, <coughs> does that draw, is that driven by whether it's renovation or new or does, can we bring energy efficiency into renovation? You absolutely can. I mean there are certain, certain systems that are just naturally easier if you're building new. Mm -hmm. um, it depends too. I mean, it, it's if you're looking at you know addressing a complete thermal envelope, that's where you know there, there's real gray area. It's like, well, yes, we, we're addressing this part of the building, <clears throat> so can address the thermal envelope here, but you know we still got a really weak performance over here. So how does the two of them when they come together? What does that average out? Right. You know, so is it like a good investment or not? Um, but no, as, as Phil mentioned, we. Um, with our team of engineers and on numerous projects, we've, we've done, you know, kind of life cycle analysis cost on what, what the typical running costs are going to be for the facility and compared that based on whether well, it's different fuel sources or different types of systems. So at least there's, there, there's a, you know, a, an informed understanding as to what the best options may be. An interesting example for us is um, you don't often get a chance to see how your buildings perform compared to others was the Berlin um, renovation of the old Notre Dame High School it was turned into 33 units, um, residential units, and it was NIFA funded, New Hampshire Home Finance Authority. Mm -hmm. um, so they have they track performance of the of their buildings um, and achieve the ratings and up until I'm not sure if it's changed within the last two years, but at the point that was finished a year later, the rating came out, and we scored better than any of the NIFA f of projects um, prior to that project. Um, and, um, and that was a result of what, do you think? Uh, it was a combination of, um, int we, we had the opportunity, the, the building was pretty much almost derelict by the time they decided mm -hmm. they managed to to get the funding together to renovate the project. So we had the opportunity to upgrade the thermal envelope all from the inside because it was a brick building and it was um, a historic building so we couldn't touch a lot on the outside. Um, so we, we had sufficient space in the building where we could build inside the brick walls to bring to increase of thermal envelope. We used a number of technologies. Um, we had wood-fired um, boilers which had heated a water system which went was circulated to each of the units. Um, it's low temp, so it went into a heat pump within each of the units, um, which also provided cooling, and there's a cooling tower for the facility. We were going to do PV systems, but historic kind of put the kibosh <laughs> to that. Um, so the tenant, the owner is waiting about five years, at which point the historic no longer has any say over it. Um, they'll probably put some PV system in there. Um, obviously making use of uh, passive solar that's got a good south facing elevation to um, all the units on the south side and benefit from the um, passive solar. Um, and just minimizing um, forget the term now, but um, ghost use of electricity. And you have a lot of things within a facility that require a current, mm -hmm. constant current, which don't necessarily achieve something in the long term. So um, a lot of effort was put into minimizing um, ghost use of uh, electricity. Um, sort of an overall package. Uh, and 
So that's just your normal course of business. I mean, is that what our expectations can be? You're going to look at whatever we're going to do in that same sort of vein. Again, how I'll can be, we make it? With the guidance from you, how far do you want to take it? Is certainly, um, and initially, we'll throw out all the ideas and uh, give you the opportunity to say, yeah, we don't think that's going to fly here or whatever. But, um, and, and like I said, and using the lead process, um, the process, the lead process, um, initially you have a team meeting, clients, all the consultants, and effectively even before anything's designed, you throw out everything on the table and say, here are the things that um, are, could be appropriate for this facility. And, you know, we'll discuss all of them and, and there'll be some disagreement on what is necessarily appropriate. Um, but get a consensus and then we'll investigate what everybody agrees is some issues that could potentially um, help the project and kind of eliminate if necessary or develop and give you the ideas on what the effect this will have on the project and prior to really getting into the, the detail of designing you're able to see without spending a lot of time what are the, the low hanging fruit and, and and what will achieve the biggest bang for your buck on the project. Yeah I think you'll find we'll do we'll be strong advocates for you to mm -hmm. consider these options. Um, then ultimately it's a collective decision as to right. what's most appropriate. Chief, you've had a chance to look through their proposal. Yeah. What uh, I guess the only thing I saw law enforcement in there was the um, Thornton. Is there other law enforcement experience? No, not specifically. I mean, we've done uh, some other, um, uh, like an ambulance station type building, but specifically for police, it was uh, Thornton recently. Yep. Um, I don't know if you were here. Uh, we mentioned that. You know, that went through a, a kind of series of works. Initially, it was renovations. Then they were awarded additional grant funding, so we went back and upgraded their emergency <coughs> operations center, um, added in a bunch of target hardening, ballistic panels, uh, windows, and so on. So it's been kind of an iterative process as they've developed more funding. Um, it's a very similar setup to what you currently have, mm -hmm. and then, you know, just the, the dealing with the intricacies of attached about buildings. The same size town. Um, yeah. About the same size town, yeah. Um, they had, and they had, they had very particular things they were looking for. I mean, um, for example, a drive through Sally Port was one of the things that they were very uh, conscious of. Um, and they wanted to, and their systems, because they were small um, and didn't actually detain anyone, uh, so there was a lot of collaboration then with the county sheriff's office, so they, they, they needed to just make sure that that was um, logistically managed properly. Um, you know, certain items, um, the drive through Sally Port came out of you know, they really, because it was town office, they wanted an ability to discreetly bring, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's juveniles or anyone, in and out of the building without actually being paraded in front of everyone at the town office. So uh, there were certain logistical intricacies that um, were just because they weren't a standalone facility that, that we uh, had to consider. Um, so they remained attached to the town office? They remained attached, yep. Okay. Uh, that, was what, that was the direction they chose to go in. Did they look at separation as a, another option? Or? Yeah, they had limited options because they didn't actually have land available to them. Um, so it was, it, was, it, it, was, it was conceptualized, but I think it was, in all honesty, a non-starter because they just knew they, they didn't have opportunity to make that happen. So They also, the, we did a spatial analysis and really the building wasn't significantly smaller than necessary to satisfy the spatial analysis. So there was a small addition to the back of the station and then absorbed a little bit more of the, they weren't using their cells at the time, mm -hmm. the, um, the, the lockups, so um, those could be absorbed into the, the space to be used differently. Um, and it really the budget dictated right. a lot as well. It totally does. Yeah. Actually worked out really well because we, we built them a new cell facility but we retasked the old ones for their uh, evidence storage. Um, it was, you know, pretty, pretty already identified as secure space within the building and the, you know, the multiple tiers depending on uh, what level of evidence needed to be stored. So uh, we managed to kind of retask those spaces accordingly without 
uh, being overly disruptive because, as you can imagine, those were <coughs> You know, concrete installations inside of the middle of the building, so logistically that would have been tough to, to sure. rework otherwise, and yep. they were tied in structurally with it. It was like one of those buildings that evolved, you know, like piece on piece on piece on piece on piece. I think three alternatives, right? Yeah. Yeah, we have two, well, we have two pieces of land that would probably right. be suitable and the, in some and way. The current station, so. And right, next to the station, across from the library, and then the other option as detailed in the RFP was expanding here. So just to be clear, this was an expansion of 2,400 feet that was added on to what they had. Is that correct? Right. Okay. And then the only other thing I saw in the um, damages part and risk allocation talks about the maximum being 50,000. Is that normal? Uh, no, and I apologize. That should have got corrected. Um, that's our that's our insurance company's default position. Uh, what that normally gets amended to is the limit of our uh, liability, which is two million. Uh, that's um, yeah. I apologize. So that should have got made. Errors and emissions. What is this? Yeah, it's uh, that, that's it's that's a hangover from residential. Negligent errors, emissions, right. strict liability, breach of contract, breach of warranty. No. Right. This um, is fifty thousand or all the contracts fee. Right. Um, all, all the architects fee. Yeah. But no, that would be. The limit of our insurance, which would be two million. Okay. Um, and we put everything out to bid, obviously. Sure. So if your construction management company is only going to get the cost estimate initially. That you oh, absolutely. They understand that. I mean, they they in part look at it as um, you know relationship building. Sure. Um, yeah, and they they've done it for multiple municipalities for us. Um, yeah, and they know that. It's fair game when it goes back out to bed. There's no favoritism in it. It's just. Um, and this is a smaller building. The last construction project that I had to deal with was when I was a county commissioner. We had a $21 million nursing right. home. One of the one of the things that I am absolutely convinced it works is good for us and saves us money is commissioning, and especially if you get into systems like you've talked about with the. Um, radiant heat or wood heat or photovoltaics, any of that. But um, the commissioning really dials the building in, and I hopefully you'll include that in your cost estimates going forward. Because I think the, the chief is going to have any number of magical things that he puts in his building. <laughs> I want to make sure the magic happens. And one of the reasons why we choose Cobb Hill is we've had experience with them pricing projects that they didn't get. Um, they do tend to be a little pricey on a number of projects, but generally they're accurate and if anything you know the number that they got they give you is more than likely going to cover it and potentially come in less. Uh, we've had a few projects where they priced it, didn't get the project. The winner eventually added significant funds to the project and it ended up being right where they said it would be. So we find them very useful as far as whether they get the construction project or not. It's very useful to have their input early yeah. on. Well, it's better than, than uh, historically, from my perspective, it's better that you have a construction manager do the cost estimates than you guys, because you're not in the trade. Right. And, and, and it does. Uh, we just become reliant on historic data. It's, it's moving all the time. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, Sorry, uh, you, sorry go ahead. I'm sorry, one last question and I'll give it over to Lloyd. <laughs> do you supervise the, the construction? Or do you, how often do you visit the site once it starts rolling? Uh, it varies, I mean, every week or every other week, depending on the stage of work. Uh, we typically don't do clerk of work services, which right. would be someone here every day. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. you're so signing off on... Correct. We're doing uh, typical observations. Our team, our engineers would be at critical milestones. They would be here. Um, typically on this type of work too, yes, we are reviewing and certifying payment applications from the contractor before it even lands on your desk. Um, so we've either said yay, no, or you know, we need to amend this depending on the progress of the work. So, um, so yes, it's, it's um, every other week or every week. It just it really depends on how rapidly the work is moving. Uh, and at what stage it's at, whether it was. Does the 
material you give us, is that ready to bid? Or are we gonna have to create that bidding process? Or do you do the bidding? Uh, yeah. We can do it um, either way. Um, for example, the, the one in kind of comments is gonna have to bid right now, it's all our documentation. Um, so all of the, what I would call the front end specifications, which you know, details out the bidding process. Uh, it's a collaborative process because you probably have procurement policy that needs right. to get built into that and everything else. So, um, but yes, yeah, so we, depends what you want to do it. We can do it so we bid it and everything comes back to us or everything comes back to you. I mean, that's just... Um, but you handle the detail. We, yeah, we'll give you documents that's ready to go. Right, we would put the documents together. I think it, it, the bids wouldn't come back to us generally. They would go Typically to the they go client, direct to most clients. Because yeah. yeah. you want to have a public opening. Yeah. 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 And I'd just step back a little bit. and care about the brother-in-law wiring the place. <laughs> Step back one thing. The comment I know you maybe just wasn't the term you meant, but supervise. We don't supervise the work on site. Right? No, but you have you have to verify we, what we you have, design. We will design. review in right. terms of it's being right. built as per the documents yeah. and yeah. highlight issues, and we can work with the client and the contractor to to address issues which haven't been dealt with properly, change orders, that sort of thing. But. Um, we, we can't be there every day, so the right. supervision is really more of a clerk of works mm -hmm. position. So are you used to working with a process where there's a separate clerk of the works hired by the yes, quite often client? Yep. Yep. Um, Certainly on big projects where you need to have somebody there every day, it's, it's a watching. good thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was a function of the construction <laughs> manager that we had over there at the county. So I'm not just I guess when you get to that level of things we decide what Right, I mean, yeah, I think it, it, it comes down to every client, right? Whether they want to hire their own independent or whether they feel there's enough between, you know, right. client representation, our representation, construction managers. Depends on your procurement route, too. If you're going to go construction management route or typical general contractor. So there's, there's pros and cons right. in that as well. Mm -hmm. And we've uh, worked with uh, HEB. Yeah, okay. A lot, actually. They just yeah. did a bridge job. Oh, bridges and roads, yeah. Yep. We do a lot of bridges and roads, yeah. They're good at it. We like working yeah. with them. Um, get a great relationship with them, so. Other observations, Chief? Questions? I, I think I asked the ones that I, the one that came up was about the clerk of the works, where that falls in, and whether or not, you know, the, the, the obviously there's different methods of going forward, too. Right, and, right. You know, it just seems that, I don't know, and this is just an aside, in rural areas it's difficult to find a clerk that yeah. isn't invested in some other ways. So it's not right. as easy as Agreed. if we're in <coughs> Boston know, or Boston something. Right. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's just, it just maybe, like you know, it's, it depends on how much you trust the construction management company. Too. Absolutely, too. There's an element <coughs> of trust there. Yep. Um, but you can put controls on that. The, uh, we go on yeah, uh, that, right. that was the only thing. I, I'm all set. I asked my the questions I had. All set. Well, we find too there's more and more um, facilities because there's companies that are doing it now that'll actually um, install, you know, live streaming webcams or something. So, sure. that, so you know, we you know while we're not on site, we could every day be looking, you know at least seeing where things are at and the progress. Is there? Hey, slow down. You can't cover that up till I take a look at it in person. Um, so, you know, there, there's certainly technology that makes makes life easier in some respects, especially with rural areas. Right I mean, obviously, any project's going to get visited. <laughs> right, right. there's going to be interest. Us, so yep, absolutely. Be able to watch it go. We can watch it go, but do we know what we're looking at? Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah there's a difference. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, great. That's <laughs> and there, but was that done as it was supposed to be? Hopefully, by the time right. the design's done, we'll all have it. We're being grained as they are in our brains. And there's also a process um, which not every local authority enforces, but it is written into the I IBC with special inspections. So, and there's a number of um, independent organizations that will do these special inspections. Right. Typically, especially in a, a project over a certain size, the engineers don't really shouldn't be in inspecting their own work. They come in to see. Well, it's so done as per their drawings, but they want some an independent to make yeah. sure that, it, and that's why exactly. it was written that way. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. And, uh, and a couple of different inspectors. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we've right. yeah. HVAC, electrical. Right. 
We had some concrete issues, but our construction compaction problems. Right, and that'll be, yeah, no, the testing agency will do that, take concrete cylinders, yep. so all that gets tested. That, that's pretty standard process. Yeah. Um, now it is. <laughs> yeah. No, well, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. 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 The other issue was shoring up one wall of the jail over there. Oh, so boy. Because it was four to go. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's. Uh, uh, what we want to do is end up with a facility that provides functionality uh, for the long term. <laughs> and. Uh, so that the design features that that, that make it work uh, as a building uh, get built into it properly, uh, that the people who are building it read the drawings correctly, don't take shortcuts to to uh, uh, save them a little time here or there, or you know, well, this ought to be good. this this is the way I always do it. It ought to be good enough. Uh, uh, so. The other thing to keep in mind is that, and we'll go over all of this once we award it, but we don't have an in-house um, building manager, if you will. Okay. Like a, a janitor or all right, okay. who is going to keep track of all the systems. Right, right. Our code enforcement officer does a yeoman's job on that, but and the chief does a certain amount. Right. But he's limited. So we have to... We can't build it so complicated that we have to hire additional help. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair point. And that's part of your ongoing costs. That right. is right. right. Yeah, can, we, can we service these systems without right. costing a fortune? Um, but I mean, they would be. I, I mean, you highlight I mean, you're going to spend you know, considerable time, money, and effort developing this. And, right, and you don't really want to revisit it for the next 25, 30 years. You have peace yeah. of mind that this is set and we're good. Well, I, I won't Right. Right. Exactly. So, yeah, that's the next slide oh, board's concern. Right. Right. All right. Anything else, gentlemen? I yeah, appreciate I your call. This maybe this today, huh? We're going to award this for some. Yeah, we are. Give a sense uh, of time frame. Yeah. And uh, but again, the time we're not looking toward a time frame to put this on the warrant in 2019. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. We, so. Yeah, you yes. know, I mean, we put it out. It's it's a normal assumption that. Oh, okay, Tom Diddy's coming up. These guys want to have something to go, right. but it, it will be for probably the following year. Oh, so yeah. the time pressure on that, I would say we'll get to it uh, in December. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, but, we need a whole year to sell it too. I mean, we've oh, yeah. we told the order to buy it a long time, but we haven't told yeah. the price or where it is, what it looks like. So. Do you have a sense on the on the three different options? What will I mean, is it going to eventually just be budget driven as to which of those favorite options? I mean, I'm sure people already have some thoughts as to you know, whether you prefer a standalone facility or but is it yeah, just going to ultimately be budget driven, do you think? Or? I don't know that it's going to be 100% budget driven. Okay. I think it's more the utility. Yep. And the Does it function? Right. Function. And, you know, we may, if, if it, and I think it monopolize things, but. If we put it off site, let's say into the fire station or right. on the other lot that we own, what do we do with this space? Right. So then that becomes, you know, how do we alter the flow here to make use of that space? So there are a lot of elements yeah. to it. Yeah. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So there are some. We have had some committees look at it in the past. Oh, okay. So that's what part of this was, is there's already a, a fair amount of legwork that yeah, there's an assessment, of, uh, needs assessment done. There was needs, a couple different studies on needs assessment going right. back to 2004, I think. Okay. So this isn't something that's just been hatched. No, 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 they're not. They're but, uh, and, but the last group met, what year was that, Lloyd? Like, do you remember? Two years ago. It was two years okay. ago, two, three years ago. We met and report two years ago. And it, it was, I think, felt uh, offsite was probably preferable, although at that point I was looking at re re remodeling the library and adding on to it as a, as a possibility when that became vacant, but that's Because they were talking the about a new library building in another right. Right. Okay. There, there And other concerns too, uh, not just do you want it here attached to town hall, how do you get the parking and deal with that, Right. and how do you do that during construction? I don't enough here for that. 
Well, unless guess. you go into the garden. Yeah. But I mean, it, but the workflow here, even while they're in construction, can yep. be very disruptive. It's a challenge. Yep. Uh, and where do we work during that time too? Yep, absolutely. Uh, go across from the library has, you know, it's right with an eyesight of the school. Right. Which is so probably our, our biggest yep. thing in town to value-wise and, and risk-wise, if you mm -hmm. will. Um, but then if you have it over by the fire station, you've got kind of a public safety campus there sure. too. So yep. there's, so there's, there's all pros, things and cons, to, right? pros and cons to each site. I don't know that, um, I don't know that it was necessarily, I think budget was the, I don't think budget is, as Sleckman always said, was the whole driving okay. functionality was a big part of it too. And, and yeah. thoughts about where, how it would play with the rest of the town. Yep. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, we had, back in the day when I was a selectman before, come up with a public safety building which included fire and police right. as a concept for the town, which promptly got me unelected. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so the idea of a more functional police station has been in the public eye for a while. Yep. And it's just a matter of coming up with a program that works for Sure, everybody. absolutely. Well, and, some, and some of the features that are built into police stations today uh, and, and regarded as important things to have like a sally port mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, the, in the past dozen years I'm aware of a number of communities that have taken an otherwise adequate police facility and added a sally port to it because right. that's I don't want to say it's a new thing but it's been recognized that that's an important thing to have as part of uh, a functional right. uh, facility. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, we've been going through the the, the, the needs identification and looking at alternatives for quite a number of years. Yeah. Um, Great. All right. Very good. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Let's appreciate thank it. You. Nice you. meeting yeah. you. Travel safe. Thank you. Thanks for meeting you. Thank you. Nice Pleasure. Nice to meet you. Take Thank care. you very much. Nice to meet you, you in person. Thanks for coming in. Nice to meet you in person. I heard you on NPR, didn't I? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Thank you. 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 The paving study, why don't we jump in and uh, deal with the <coughs> budgets? Uh, conservation? Yeah, uh, other conservation, which other is conservation. Uh, 4619. Um, so, Ag Commission is looking for. Um, the same uh, same level of funding as last year, and there's a detailed sheet on the back that, that talks about uh, their uh, anticipated usage. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess uh, the the big piece that's uh, if you call it big, that's different from last year is in moving forward with their uh, uh, composting demonstration and uh, uh, composting area at the community garden are looking to put a small storage shed up to keep uh, shredder and garden tools and that sort of thing in. Um, so who's going to take care of that? Who's going to take care of what? The storage shed. Ag Commission. Okay. These, uh, how many gardeners do we have? We have quite a few. And is that going there to are 35 open? plots, it says. And, and so. Is that going to be open to all of them? It is. Yeah. Uh, there are 35 plots sold last year. We have more plots than that, but not that many more. And I don't. Karen, do you remember? I don't. Remember. What the total are? Mm -hmm. At any rate. Uh, but <coughs> the, the, 
composting <laughs> of uh, <coughs> material from the gardens is something that the members of the Ag Commission have taken on as a right. uh, em emptying the composting barrels and getting them into the piles. And, uh, so the supplies for a demonstration that's been dropped from 500 to 110. Right. So now we're going to get into the composting business. Is that why we don't have to demonstrate anymore? So uh, I guess it's it's the next phase in the. Okay. Uh, and there's no need for the consultant anymore. Right. Well, the sign was done this year. And this. Two hundred and six dollar increase on the no foil line. Yep. All right. If you, go, if you go to the detail on the back page, yeah. Um, this includes herbicide treatment uh, at the two locations that we've done recently, mm -hmm. and eight days of uh, diver assisted harvesting. And those are uh, two items that were. Uh, that the state included in the, in the program for this year. Uh, we may or may not use all eight days, uh, but the the, uh, the bid price is up slightly on the per day. And, uh, and the water cost of $900, what is the water for? Um, that drinking water for people that are lake drinkers that may be in the affected areas. Oh, okay. So it's not like bottled water. It's, it's actually no. It is bottled. It is. It is bottled water. Okay. okay. So, um, but it's supplying people. That, uh, morning. Supplying morning. people to take their water directly from the lake in the area where we're putting the herbicide in. Okay. We give them drinking water for the period of time when the water has elevated levels of the herbicide in it. Okay. So, sir. This is the cobwebs of my mind. We'll be talking about milfoil. Yeah. And I want to word it correctly. And <coughs> the word concern is the wrong word. There was one bidder to pull milfoil, correct? There, yes, to, to, har to diver harvest, yeah. And was there an issue surrounding that? Uh, we had I been delicate enough. Well, uh, <laughs> We did not do any diver harvesting this year, and the reason was because the the, uh, the selected bidder for this year's contract, and again selected by the state, based on our prior experience with them in terms of their technique and their reliability schedule and that sort of thing, just didn't didn't meet the standard. So we should have done some harvesting this year. We didn't because uh, in our experience with this guy in the past. Uh, we didn't get good value for the dollar. With that that being said, I want to thank you and your committee for its vigilance. Uh, this is a natural resource, and uh, well, and it didn't go unnoticed. Before. And we didn't we didn't accept a bid from this contractor we, uh, for 2019. The bid that we got uh, that was submitted to the state and us was from a, another contractor that. We tried to get to come in and work for us at the end of the year this year, and he was out straight with other stuff. So, uh, and so it was it was unfortunate that we couldn't do the harvesting, but uh, having had a bad experience, it's, it with certainly the makes sense to me. Well, <laughs> at any rate, all right. Any so, is there? I'm looking at the 2013 number, twenty-seven thousand. Yep. Which is when we did another harvesting, I guess. Uh, what we did in 2013, as I remember, is we did herbicide treatment, uh, and it was over a m more expensive areas. Uh, cost then, we, then we didn't do any of that. And we did. Five or six we didn't years. do any herbicide treatment for five years, and then we did some this past year. And uh, and uh, the recommendation is we do it again this coming year to try and so, knock it back. So that's why we had a number of years of a relatively. So is, is the expectation that in 2020 it's going to drop down back into the yes, eight or ten thousand dollars? Yes. So uh, there's no way to 
moderate that, that speaking down. Um, sure there is. I mean, you can you can put money aside right. to, to have a fund that when you need to do it, do it. Um, I mean, I would think that next year when we're talking about this, if we're still around, yep. is that we should think about putting five grand or four grand or yep. something rather than just dropping the budget down to 10 yep. and then pushing it back up to 25 or 30 yep. five years yep. from now. Yep. Um, and, I, you know, there are a number of things as a town that we do that aren't level year to year. Um, and, right, yeah. and this is an example. The question is, uh, what level of noise do we want to deal with? Is $5,000 a year, uh, if it's a, certainly if it's a $50,000 or it's a $500,000 item, Yes. That's a bump. I mean, that that becomes a huge issue. Mm -hmm. I'm not averse to that to setting money aside at all. Uh, I think there are a number of areas where we could, and a lot of towns do, put money into funds that then get drawn out of uh, that. You, you, you sort of level fund in, into this yeah. reserve account, and then it gets drawn out as it's used, which is up and down, but it helps to level the taxes out. But it, that's, in general, a level of complexity as a town that we have stepped up to in the past. Right. And I, I'm not saying we shouldn't. I think it's a great idea. Uh, well, but, it's something to look at. It, yep. I just, it makes doing the budgets a lot easier than these enormous fights. Yep. You know, trying to presume what's going to happen. Just exactly. Yep. All right. All right. I make a motion that we approve the other conservation budget, forty-six nineteen, for twenty-eight thousand four hundred fifty-six dollars. I'll second. All right, and uh, one piece of further discussion question that I have is: we have five hundred dollars in the budget this year for forestry service, and there's nothing been submitted for twenty nineteen. I don't know what forestry service does it doesn't look like we spent any money out of it I don't know that was an item we put in a couple of years ago uh, the office got busy with you know, public information was a big thing yeah uh, if we had a forester like other towns that would uh, handle those uh, well we do so have a forester that we contract with so, but, but we haven't, we but we haven't contracted it, well, this year. But we haven't used its services. We had, right. we had uh, some renegade loggers right. a, a couple of years ago. So are we, uh, do we want to put any money in a forestry line? Or do we want to just let it go away? I, I'd recommend we use it as a placeholder. Okay. So. For how much? Five hundred dollars. All right, so you want to change this to 28,956 total? Uh, I'll, I will uh, make that amendment. Uh, second. Second. Okay. All right, all in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Opposed. All right, so the grand total for 4619 is now $28,956. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, Mr. Mr. Bean. Good morning. Come How on down. How slow are we going to get? Good morning, sir. Uh, I hope not, but it sounds like three to six. Yeah. He's saying 12 to 16. I'm slow. like seeing a range all over the place. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, when I looked at the forecast, and it wasn't, it was yesterday, it's like the next Monday and Tuesday, they're talking about rain, snow mix, warm in the day, cold at night, and I didn't get the idea there was significant accumulation, but... It was a little slick this morning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, dig, road. Yeah. Just, just what we need. After, yeah, after you got hammered... Uh, it's been non-stop, it seems winter. like, since the end of October. Yeah. I mean, we're plowing in October, which is unusual. Yeah. All right. Ru 
road surface management study. So let's see. I'm looking for the uh, the detail sheets in here. Yeah, we we got the maps here, right? That should uh, be a complete packet. I don't know if Jim has that one. Jim has the first. One. You? Yeah. So uh, I think it's th this. This has that one. Just has uh, it's printed out. All right. And a little more detail. So yeah. Th this is this is the one that, that you're working from. I think that has the the amounts. Yes. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Yep. I have the uh, the right. UK detail by right. seven point five and ten percent. Yep. That one so, on your right is the latest one. She this she sent by mail, but this would be the same by this email. one. Yeah, that's the latest one she sent. That I made copies but, of but the this, long sheets. But, but this was just. This one is just the, those printouts. Right, it's right. based upon the uh, yes. um, right. budget. Th this, this is the detail. Oh, I kind of like that map, though. Yep. I can see that map. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That well, uh, did you not go 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 I, I didn't. Not yet. There. I, I have a set right nice. here. Sorry, oh, I want to say it was a crazy set there. there. I, think, I think we got enough. Good yeah. Yeah. Sets I didn't get a, I don't have a copy of, the of, of this thing. Of the thing. Yep. Well, the one thing that was a little unclear to me is on the, you know, the 2019 paving. Yep. Uh, we have kind of like a, a bunch of things to do in segments. Right. And on Dame Road, I'm trying to understand this order ID. It says number five. Yep. And I couldn't quite visibly see where number five was. Right here. Right between the old farm or whatever that is and this other road. So, so that's, that's, right. that's right there. yeah, segment. We're turning to the west. Okay, so yeah, that makes sense. And, and actually, if, if you, this one up here is blown up enough that you oh, can yeah. see the numbers on it, Perfect. okay? So segment number five is the red segment right yep. there. Right? Okay. And then it is the first earlier on uh, North Line. North yeah. Line, it's the end of the Ledge Hill Road and yep. the segment. Which yeah. all makes sense. I just wanted to confirm it because I was trying to look at my map and it's like I had a magnifying glass out and everything. And I yeah. still was yeah. unable to. And they also yeah. had a piece of uh, federal corner that goes into yep. um, Well, let me suggest, yep, just around. But before we get into the detail here, all right, they presented us with two scenarios. One represented a 10% increase over what we've been doing. So per annum. Right, 10% this year and then uh, compounded going forward. And the other one presented a 7.5% increase. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I looked at the build out, if you will, based upon those two approaches, it seems apparent to me that the 10% is a better view, a, a better approach to follow than the 7.5% because the 10% is what at the end of a few years is going to get us to roads that are yeah, the the significantly up to where where it needs to be. Period, you're actually yeah. working in the middle of the range. Yep. No yellow. Right. So, um, I, uh, to my way of thinking, our first step is: Are we going to follow the seven and a half or the ten, or gonna throw it out and say we're going to do our own thing? Which I don't think makes sense, but it's always an option. No. So, and I, I would suggest that the 10% uh, budget increase approach is the path to follow to, to really help us deal with uh, the issues. 
Yeah, it's a significant difference at the end of 10 years, for it sure. It is. It is. And, uh... Yeah, there's no red and no yellow. Yeah, and if you look at the 7.5%, there's... You still have yellow and red. Right. Yeah. Woodlands. Mm -hmm. Surely where it's very well. You know, Lloyd thinks we're going to do that this year. <laughs> Under Boy Road is still red. Cross Country Road is still red. Yeah. Green Valley Road is still red. Harvest Lane is still red. Do we ever get to Harvest Lane? Because Harvest Lane currently is red. Um, at the 10% increase, there's no red on here at all. So. Right. <clears throat> right. But at seven and a half, we still have pretty much the same problems that we have today, mm -hmm. with the exception of the Northland Road and the right. and, uh, Southern Road. Or not going to get more, so. Yep. The crossing's getting worse. Thoughts? Lloyd? I'm going to hold off for a moment. Okay. And I don't I don't have the numbers I don't remember that the financial impact was that enormous. Can we see your paintbrush separate? This? Yeah. Because I know Bell and I were looking at it Friday. Yeah, that's this that's this one. That's this one here. That's the Maybe I'm losing it. Huh? Maybe I'm losing it, but I just You're welcome to use my opportunity. I have the old one here. Can I just? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, this this is, uh, let me see here. You want by row or by just like? No, at this point, they had one sheet that was the whole yeah, three it? scenarios. Yeah. Is this it? Is that what you're looking at? Where'd you find that? Appendix D in your paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need a keeper. <laughs> so, yeah. My recollection is proven right, is that it, <clears throat> we're, we're looking at a pretty small increase this year and next year. And then even 2021, we're really talking about um, $20,000 difference. It isn't until you get out into the 23, 24, that there's a significant difference between seven and a half and 10 budgetarily, and this year, I what the number was, if we did nothing, we're still at $200,000, so it's not, the budget for 19 to a 10% increase is $221,342 by the rest of it. Right. So, it's not like it's a big hit. Right. on the budget, but it is a difference in the approach, I think, <coughs> as Jim could verify, when you start looking at the list of yep. tasks, it's broken down a bit. So, well, and um, because it's compounded, that's that's always true. I mean, yeah. early on, you know, 10% of what's here is a little bit, and then a little bit more, a little bit more. So a few years out, it starts to become some bigger numbers. But one of the things that we talked about when they made the presentation and the recommendation is, is that in five years, you come back and revisit and look at the roads again and see how things are going, which I think makes a lot of sense. You spend a little money to do that, to update the conditions, see how what's been done if we're following their program matches what the prediction is and gives you an updated starting point for going forward and at that point you know from wherever the budget is at that at that point in time the answer may be 
not to go to, you may want to then scale it back a little bit in terms of the annual increase beyond where it's been uh, again. Uh, or if you're three years into the program and you look how it's working, maybe you modify these out years and push exactly. a little more money this way to get, get it done sooner so that you're leveling it out a bit more so that when you come out to five years from now, you've got a, you know, let's say a $300,000 road budget. That's the road budget. Yeah. And that's going to keep us in exactly in green and blue. And the the one thing that I remember, though, is they didn't take in consideration that uh, we got to put a top coat on brown. We should put a top coat on brown, and we've been doing that, and they don't really kind of figure. Well, that way. and, and uh, yes, as I looked at the detail that, that they're providing, and uh, it it doesn't include that, so we're going to continue with with those with that approach. Then we have to factor that into how we're going to actually spend the money. It'll be but, extra money, obviously. That's right. Involved, right, in keeping up to what they have planned out for us. But, for instance, I, I think we have to. We, we've got to get to a starting point here if we want to talk about nuts and bolts. So, if we're going to, if the starting point is the ten percent increase, if we're in agreement on that, then we can look at what they recommend for 2019 on the ten percent and start looking at the individual pieces and saying here's what they recommend and and here's how it all stacks stacks up now how does that come together with some of the things that we've already set our sights on um, yeah they move some like putting the top coat on brown road right they move something um, from their 19 list into 20. i mean but that's when you have to get together with the young lady who created this mess and, and she figure out if there's some item, some quarter mile that we can do in 2020 to offset the cost that we're going to push into, or part of the cost. I mean, I don't think we're I ever going to get rid of... I can see that down the road, you know, we're working it out. Right. But I think we've got a few years of figuring it in yeah. in the beginning. I think you've got to figure that in now. But, boy. As a selectman and as a road agent, I think we're in a good position. All parts of government are looking to invest in our roads. You weren't at town meeting and there was a person who wanted to add $300,000 to your payment budget. Now, maybe that wasn't well thought out, but wasn't it just a couple of years ago you wanted to put money a truck aside to a truck and they said, go get it? And you've got a two hundred thousand dollar truck for a buck seventy five, and you've been able to get the roads done four hours early every storm. Thanks so get it for one, one sixty. That see, see my point. I think that the people in this room are in a good good position. The next thing is we've had a number of projects: two boat ramps, uh, Lang Pond Road, and the Sodom Road Bridge that we put out to bid, and they all came back under budget less than what the engineers made the projects, right? Hmm. Number one, the easiest thing is, and we need to make a decision today, is what's the cost of Sawyer Road? We asked for some estimates from Carol. I did talk to him this morning, and he said he'd have it to me, but I didn't get it this morning. Okay, I expect it. This is not a slam at you. I expect it in writing. Yes. Oh, me too. He was going to fax it this morning. Yes. I apologize. I, he did try to reach me. <coughs> Two weeks ago, and I had the flu. I mean, I've been battling the flu for so two that, weeks. That, that's project number one right there. Um, but I see that, that I that's, totally that's that, separate from this. That's okay. a separate warning. Right. I'm, yes. just, I'm, right. I'm doing the same. Well, the point is that if we use the same style of management, for example, what's the next pro road that needs to be done, or two roads need to be done in your estimation next year? I, I definitely think North Line is top priority. That one's falling apart. It's going to be tough plowing this year. And chunks are going to be coming out of the road. It's that bad. And so we need the information, the linear feet, correct? We do. Um, we need the linear feet. What we need to agree on is, are we going to, why we're there, are we going to just do part of it? 
because that's kind of how they broke it off in here, is doing a segment of it. Doing that quarter mile. Or are we just going to be like, well, we're there. Do we want to just knock it out and save a little bit of money as opposed to jumping around? I need to know the linear feet. Which we have. The width. Which we have. And the preparation work. How many culverts? And this is the year I'm going to put my foot down and say culverts need to be a little bit bigger. Can we use the free material from crushed glass? Yep. Okay, that's changed a little bit. The other thing is that we go like we did on Lane Pond Road with precast headers, and that they be uh, three or four feet beyond the road. That way they're not caving in years, years down. The next thing is reclaim the road. It's about $35,000 a mile. And then there's the first coat, and I have no problem doing the, the first coat one year and the other coat the next year. And also both times that they're the edges. Now, if that road is so long, we need to do it like Durgan Road over two years. But those are the prices we need to know, right? Yes. And then, then it's a matter for <coughs> you and the selectmen to decide, budget committee to decide, and uh, the voters to vote it up or so down. So I'm trying to follow this for Is it your recommendation that we do it the way we've been doing it the last 20 years? Because that's essentially what you're saying about North Line. Their recommendation in the report is to do a quarter mile of North Line Road. I mean, I, and I'm just asking. Yep. I'm a little flexible. In past town meetings and past budget committees, they've said, why don't you do Durgan Road all one year? Why don't you do uh, these different roads all one year? But I think what we're going to ask flexible. the voters is we're setting up a five year pavement program mm -hmm. that's going to be X. Are you in favor of that? This year it's going to cost you $230,000 or whatever it is. Yep. And there's a list here of the projects that we're going to do. This, this, that was my understanding how we're going to proceed. This, this study and the detail that comes out of it includes at least one road maintenance procedure that I, I'm not aware that we've used in the past, which is chip seal. Uh, and um, as well as crack sealing that has always been part of the regular road maintenance budget as opposed to the paving line, right? As, as I look at, and again, this is, the, this is 2019, the 10%, the first year on the 10% program, she's got a total of $221,000 in change. Uh, 12,000 of that is crack sealing. She's got specific segments on, on here that she's recommending we do as crack sealing. I, I believe crack sealing has always been just part of the road, the highway maintenance budget as opposed to the, uh, the paving line. Am I right? Correct. Jim? Okay. So, uh, and then you got about forty-two thousand dollars worth of oh, chip just, seal. You know what? We we did put seventy-five hundred into crack sealing for this for this year. I don't know. That was like I think the first time we broke it out. We put seventy-five hundred dollars in for this year. In but in the in the regular highway maintenance budget. Yes. Right. Not in the paving. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Article. Okay. So this study includes maintenance as well as paving items. In, in the numbers, so it's a little bit different. In other words, we say, you know, 200,000 is about where we've been for paving. Mm -hmm. uh, she's got something that says 221, but that includes things that are maintenance and aren't paving. All right. Um, So just trying to end up the chip ceiling. Yeah, that's forty-one thousand five hundred nineteen dollars is what she has as the estimate for chip seal. Uh, chip yeah. seal was recommended by Allstate because it's a process that they provide, correct? Yes, correct. Remember when I had a conversation with you a year ago? I said chip seal, especially for hills. 
Durgan Road and the Canaan Valley, and you mentioned that it, you weren't sold on that process. Did, did, am I quoting you correctly? Correct. And I've looked into it, and I support your decision. But what, have we done it before? No, no, we've not so used it. we've not done it before, there's no... Well, I've seen it article. The Allstate comes to visit. Allstate Haven comes to visit every so often, mm -hmm. particularly when they're in the area. And they say, come see the road, see what we've done. And you know what? It's, it's probably a pretty good product if you're doing something that's in good shape. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do is accomplish repairing something that's in very bad shape and it's just not going to work for what we need and the money that we have to get it done in. Well, and, and I think that's why you have to look. The chip seal that she has in the schedule for this year are on uh, five segments, which is to say a mile and a quarter of ledge hill road. And then she has an inch and a half overlay on another quarter mile. I'm guessing this is probably the. Uh, it's yeah, it's the, the top half. The of top half of the road, yeah, right? Yeah. So. But then when, you, when does Ledge Hill Road come back into the schedule? Yeah, correct. You're right. It's it's finding yeah, a little well, bit of time. Well, Ledge Hill yeah. Road is is a unique road. First of all, he knowingly and with our support did not grind and regrade the top portion. If the road needed to get done, uh, there were other projects, uh, there were some other things going on. I support, I think, no, in past years you've got problems that that should be reground and done like the rest of Ledge Hill Road, correct? Yes. Okay. But if she's chip sealing in order to buy us another two years, let's say. Uh, well, Ledge Hill Road is the second busiest road in town, and it has heavy truck travel. And right. if you look at the top half mile, it's already doing. Yeah. What is the okay. 2028? Yes. Because one truck, one, ten years one loaded tractor trailer truck equals thirty thousand cars. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Chip Sound is not going to correct that. No, it isn't. <coughs> and quite frankly, <coughs> crack sealing is to, the state does it to make it black and look shiny. Uh, crack sealing does not work on our busy roads. It's destroyed within so two, we, two months. Are we looking to dismiss this? I mean, I, I got a well, here, problem with here, here's, not here's, a here's, plan. Here's my issue, okay? We started this study, and they said these are the these are the types of maintenance activities that we include in what we're looking at and what we're recommending. So, if we didn't want to include chip seal, the time to say don't include that in the program is when we got started, not when we have the result that says here's how we deal with it. Because if we don't do anything up there, then uh, on these segments, then what that's going to do is that will accelerate the time when we got to tear it out and start over. Uh, I did talk to her about it in the beginning. I, I said I don't usually do it, mm -hmm. but I'm not opposed to it if you think that's the way to go. But I don't have probably the experience that a lot of people would have with that. All I've done is I've gone and seen it, seen right. it sprayed, and then I've watched the results of it. Um, you know, the cracks do come back. You know? uh, so. It buys a couple of years, I think. I don't think it's a. I, again, it's a cheap. It's it's a yeah. cheaper product. I agree with you 100. percent <clears throat> everything is interrelated. Okay. In, in other words, the information that was gathered as they went out and surveyed the roads that they put into their the, the road service management system database. From that, that develops a a condition number for that segment of road and based upon that and the and the importance of the road to the town and the and the amount of traffic that goes over the road all of those variables get plugged into their model that allows them to say 
if the condition of this segment of road is X today, next year is going to be here, here, five years out, if we do not get this where it's going to be. So you start plugging the various maintenance and, and repaving options in to uh, to extend the life of paving or when it gets to a certain point say okay now we throw the towel in here and we tear it out and start over. <laughs> My point here is if we're going to take one of the <clears throat> maintenance uh, procedures that's built into this model, it's a state model, it's not uh, not something that, that we or LRPC did on our own. If we're going to take it off the table and not do any of this stuff that's been recommended here, then that's, um, that's going to change how that pavement ages and when in their projection it's going to come up for uh, total rebuild. Uh, I'm not opposed to trying it. I'm so opposed to trying it. Maybe that's what we have to do to see what happens. I do a segment and see what happens. I, I, that, that's my only thing, you know. If we, if we say, um, here's, here's what we do, you guys have recommended some other things, we're not going to do that, we're just going to do these pieces, or we're just going to, uh, now that we know the condition of the road, we'll eyeball it and say, well, I think we'll do this, this, and this. And we're not getting uh, the full benefit out of the the information we've gathered and I mean, an important part of this whole system is that this model gives you a way to predict going forward what's going to happen to the roads based upon uh, experience that's been gathered by the state in the state. Uh, if, if nothing's done to the roads or if certain types of maintenance procedures are done. So, well, I, I, this is something we haven't done before. Um, I, I, I would say that if we choose not to do these procedures as they're recommended, uh, the one thing that I can predict is that the pavement that's there now will need to be replaced sooner than if you than if you if you do the chip seal uh, and the crack seal and, and those kinds of things. Um, well, I think in, in addition to that, I mean, if we've gone through the exercise of having someone look at our roads. We have created a, a maps and, and recommendations. If we decide to just reject that and and then we need to have another plan. And if the other plan is we're going to spend $225,000 a year on paving and every year we're going to decide which road might get it, I think that's just totally disorganized. I mean, at the very least, we need to give this a couple of years. And if the process and the progress isn't there, then we can revisit it and say, well, that was not worth our time, but okay. our roads aren't going to get any worse if we do the, <coughs> the right. program that, that they've described. I mean, and if, if Carol has a problem paving a quarter of a mile, then we'll find another paver. I mean, he's not the only guy in town. No, no. It's, it's just we're trying to get the best bang for a buck. It's not that they won't do it. We just yeah. want to, you know, picking up equipment moving around town is more costly, that's all. Yep. So I'm going to re respond. First of all, are you aware of a chip seal anywhere I can drive to that has been successful to your specifications? Because I will go see it. Huh. Uh, successful? No, I, I don't know that I can. Moldbro has done it. I mean, we can. We can no, I have Moldbro. I haven't spent a lot of time to asking because the studies that I read, the information I read is, when we resurface, the improvement lasts one or two years. I think it's a waste of money uh, unless someone can show me where it's been done, especially our roads that take a, a high use. My information is that the expected future condition of our pavement are based upon a number of items. These include, but are not limited to, the type of 
pavement, the depth of the base material, the most recent construction or reconstruction, the traffic, the heavy truck volume, and the drainage features. One of the reasons why Ham Hill is starting to W is all the water comes off a Winter Circle farm and just goes into a ditch and half of it goes under the road. If we put a series of catch basins in there and took the water off, that would dry out within four years. You and I have had this conversation. Go over to Newfound Lake and they've, all the towns <coughs> over there, that's what they've done. But it takes money, doesn't it? Sure it does. Yeah, yeah I mean, there is some good thoughts about trying to spend the money on... Well, can we buy the, the discussion? Can we talk about road reconstruction and not pavement? Or make pavement one issue and road reconstruction another issue? I mean, they didn't... In this study, I couldn't see where they got deeply into the reconstruction of our highways. Their concern was the... the condition of our pavement. Right, as a matter of fact, and I, I know there was some uh, discussion back and forth about uh, what the full depth reclamation and paving was, and that does, that does not include rebuilding the road base, which is something that you do when you, uh, when you do the full depth reclamation. What, what, what did you find out at the Brown Road? So 80 yards of gravel had to come in because it was a clay base? Oh, yeah, at least. And thank God we have a road agent that doesn't pave over clay. It was and it went over budget through no fault of your own. But, I, you know, how much over budget did it go? Um, not bad, because, um, I mean, we got, the, we got the results back, I think, for uh, doing the, ed the road edges. Mm -hmm. I think it came in at, like... 30, was it 3300 or 3400 dollars? Yes. Substantially mm -hmm. under the original estimate. So we're really, we were pretty close yeah. to everything. But until you get up there, <clears throat> you don't know. Right. We don't know. Nobody knows until you start digging up these roads. Yeah. I mean, for example, uh, Sodom Road, it's amazing what you found stumps, yeah. wires. Culverts that didn't match. Culverts that didn't go, didn't appear on either end even. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Just buried in the middle. Yeah. Yep. Well, but that's the nature of old roads. Yeah. You know, that's that's just what that's, it is. That's, that's what why, is. since he's been road agent, he has done it this way, and I support that. Back to the case at hand. I'm going to move that we. Accept the 10% 10, 10 increase plan as our plan going forward for 2019. We're going to have to visit this every year anyway. Sure. And, 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 the, and, and Aaron has indicated that part of the process is we sit down with her every year and we can say, okay, there's some things that we did this year. And so, update the when, when you input this stuff in there, that may change some of the things that get get in there for the next year. And if you're concerned about chip seal working or not working, first thing you do is you contact the company and say, I don't think your product well, works, but I got to do it. But the other thing you want to do is, Aaron will come back, not next year, but maybe two years from now or three years from now and do a physical survey just like this on areas that we've done. If that process doesn't work, then it's going to become very apparent right. when she has to do her resurvey of this. Now, with respect to chip seal, one, one place that I'm aware that the state did it, and they do use the process, is 28 North in Wolfboro. From North Line Road up to the Aspie Line, uh, it was within a few years of when they put put down new pavement and they went in and did the chip seal and it's been a year or two since then. Now, I haven't walked along there and looked at it, but it, it's, it, 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 it seems like a reasonable approach. I, I and, and I... The guys over coffee, I, I, the I, I would say it's slippery. What's that? It's slippery. It's yeah. nice. yeah. Moisture. So. And that's not the first time that they chip sealed that, that section as well. They chip sealed it, I don't know, maybe eight years ago. And okay. 
And that's before they paved it, and that's when I noticed that, geez, I didn't think it was a good you know, use of money, but. It's yeah. also a unique area because that weather changes right at the town line and there's always accidents mm -hmm. out there, yeah. which I don't, I think has nothing to do with road surfaces. Wolf Road Gore. That's yep. all there. Right. Yep. So. I don't know, I, I just, I, we don't I, have I, a plan. We, 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 need we don't have any other plan than this. This is a plan that's been brought forward yeah. in a model that shows that and you know, the model can be totally out to lunch. Um, and, but based upon following the model, you know, if, if you tease it out and look at the, at, at how the roads look at the end of 10 years, uh, the, the projection is that they're considerably better than they are today. Uh, and well, we'll know in five years. But she's probably projected out at five what our road condition should be. Right. So it isn't like an endless window. It's, it's a pretty, pretty close window. Right. And you know, I mean, it is a good thing just to see firsthand on our own roads what the chip seal does before we conclude that it. Right. Yep. And if beyond if the partially, beyond chip seal, if partially the plan works, it's still better than not having a plan. Right. So if everything works except for the chip seal or everything works except for some other portion of this, then okay, maybe we don't do that part going forward. And, and maybe we change up. And, and based else. upon um, the information that we gather as we do the process, if we go back to LRPC and say, uh, you know, Chip Seal didn't, didn't, do us for, didn't do it for us, they have the ability, based upon the data they gather this year, to then look at alternative mm -hmm. approaches. Yeah, modify it. Well, when I told that I wasn't a big fan of the trip ceiling, mm -hmm. I said, you know, we had to use it. I, I don't know, I'm not a fan of it or whatever. She said, I wasn't alone. She said that because it, it's, it's like halfway, if I remember correctly, she noticed that it's halfway between just doing a, a top coat, like a one inch top coat, and that's where some other towns will just feel like you get a, a little bit more bang for your buck for it doing the talk. Maybe the application too. You know, it's even even in paving, not just chip sealing. Depending on the application, you know, how much pavement are we putting down? Are they actually putting an inch? Are they actually putting two inches? Or is it, you know, three quarters of an inch? I don't and think do there's the, a lot of competitors doing it either. I don't know. Yeah, no. I, I, I honestly don't know, but. Is it something we have to watch? Yeah, well, it looks like, based on the number I'm seeing here, she's talking $7,800 per quarter mile for chip seal. She's talking 19,300 miles, $300 per quarter mile for uh, overlay. So, so it's two and a half times. It's, yeah, uh, yeah it's. Yeah, almost it's, three times. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's in, in between, yeah, about two and a half. Two and a half times as expensive. So, uh, and we know that if you take a section of road that's a little deteriorated and you do an overlay, which is what the state does all the time, mm -hmm. you have yeah, limited, well, limited, right, limited success with that too. So, uh, yeah, I, I'd rather keep the road drivable until you get to the point of not doing, doing it right. You know, and that's so, I think what that pro this program is all right. pushing for. So, I, I think that we. It, follow this program in, in 2019. Now, uh, that includes, you know, uh, full depth reclamation and a base coat on, on a quarter mile of Dame Road, quarter mile of Federal Corner Road, and, um, and a quarter mile of North Line Road, um, and an inch and a half overlay on a quarter mile of Ledge Hill. But we we also got a top coat to put on <coughs> Brown Road. Brown Road. Right. Um, and I haven't looked out to see how far down the road. 
she's projecting dealing with the other pieces in North Line Road. Uh, I mean, I'm just looking at next year on here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. so if so, the rest so. of the North Line Road was in 2020 or 2021, maybe we don't do Dame Road this year. Yeah. 2020. Push it all together into North Line this year and then do Dame next year. I mean, I, I think it's, it's movable to that extent if it's more cost effective to do. Because you got part of North Line Road that's in that, or part of uh, Federal Corner Road that's in that. Mm -hmm. On North Line, she has uh, 2021, it's an overlay at that point. <clears throat> On the other sections. Correct. Okay. Which was one of the things I was questioning, you know. Yeah. And when I talked to Frank Taylor, he's like, best bang for your buck is to grind it up probably to get rid of all the center long, you know, the long crack down the center and stuff. That, that, that comes back when you're doing overlay, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I guess I see her point. But the point is, what she's doing here is to try to get more treatment on all the roads as opposed to fixing up three good, you know, making three roads perfect. It's over five years' time. She's trying to get some kind of treatment on all the roads. But over that five year period of time, you are making a certain number of roads perfect. I mean, if you look out five years at her projection, there are pieces of the roads that you are doing. You know, you're doing it. Yep. Um, and it gets, there's more and more of that happening. So that at the end of 10 years, you, you actually have done more than just cracks in the road. Or you can also yeah. you rebuilt a bunch of it. Yep. But, you know, I, I agree that maybe we do parts of it to, I mean, we should follow this and see what happens. And I think we have to, really. I, I don't think we can not do it. And I'd like to read something. And not have a plan, just doesn't make sense. I'd like to read something from Judge Ford. Quote, all too frequently municipal officials set priorities with the worst first approach. They give the most deteriorated roads the highest priority. Such roads are also the most expensive to repair which commits a large amount of town funds to only a few roads. Communities then find that inadequate funds remain to accomplish the relatively inexpensive preventive and routine maintenance necessary to extend the life to the rest of the road network. These roads have low to moderate deterioration and can have their useful lives extended significantly at a lower cost by utilizing pavement preservation strategies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it could be that we modify the program to do more. I mean, maybe Jim comes back to us and, or somebody in 2022 and says, you know, really, I want to do soup to nuts on this road. It's in the plan, doing parts of it over the next three or four years. I just want to do it this year. And, you know, if we're working within the plan, then you can really have a informed discussion about how that affects the budget, how it affects the ongoing maintenance, you know, maybe adding a hundred thousand dollars one year stretches out the the uh, maintenance options for another two years or five years or whatever it is. But I think it without a plan you don't have a, a informed discussion. With a plan you have an informed discussion. And the way she explained it too, which you know, I kind of always know. People like to see something happening in front of their house during that 10 years, even if it's not the <laughs> final <coughs> solution. The final People solution. are happy to see something happening as opposed to nothing yeah. for 10 years. Yeah. And, and I, that's an important consideration. Uh, but what we want to make sure we do is something that actually adds some value to the asset and not uh, uh, it isn't just window dressing. And so, it's, from the point of view of selectmen, and I, everyone knows how long we're going to be selectmen, but when somebody says, what, what, what are you doing about the roads? I like to be able to say, this is what we're doing. That is you know, it's actually, you know, it's not just bullshit. It's something we're actually doing. Mm -hmm. We've got a plan, and this is yeah. our. So maybe we're not in front of your house today, but you're in the plan. There it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Created by professionals. 
couple times. Yep, I do agree with Aaron that. Aaron Cable, right? Because I think we'll even leave that out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I have a motion by a tip on the oh. ago. All right. <coughs> so your motion is to accept a 10 year, uh, the 10% increase in the paving schedule as structured by um, Lakes Region Planning Commission. And as we always do, we visit it every year. Second. All right. Any further discussion? Yes. Does yes. that mean that we add 10% to the no, we do have their, their price schedule. I think she... No, no. For the warrant article for next year, do we add 10% to that figure? Uh -huh. I'm going by the schedule of costs that she projected, which was a 10% increase annually. And that comes out to $231,000 or $221,000. Well, all right, here, here's, here's the issue, okay. all right? We've already got 12,000 of what's in here built into the regular budget because that's crack seal. Right. Uh, well, we, we budget 7,500. All, right. all right, but all I'm saying is crack seal is part of normal road maintenance. Maybe it needs to be increased a little bit. What needs to be increased? You've got 7,500 in for crack sales. She's this schedule is including 12,000. Oh, I see what you're doing. Taking right? parts of this and putting in the operating budget, and then you and do the crack seal has, has, has always been, as far as I know, part of the normal road maintenance budget. And the the warrant article has been used to be Pay. called special for tar, right? right? Special right. for tar, uh, which is which is the 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 actual paving or reconstruction stuff, which which includes the oh, would right. include the full depth and the overlay, and uh, and, and uh, <coughs> I would say the chip seal is part of that. As well. um, the other thing is um, the fifty thousand for road construction that used to be in my budget that's now in the pavement. Right. So it's that's not in this. We could add that. No, that's right. Okay. That's right. And I know the placeholder that we sent to CIP was for two fifty already mm -hmm. this year. I I sent something different. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not sure where it where it stands. When when we met with CIP, there were a couple of different things in there. I think I think I sent two eighty five because I didn't know and I wrote subject to change. Right. And because we didn't have this report. Yes, two thirty five the previous paper. Mm -hmm. And you added the fifty thousand for two eighty five. Yes, that's what you did. My question again is, accepting the state, the, the SAGE program, do this year, to the 235 for paving, do we add 10% for fiscal year 2019? I don't know that we need to. Okay, the answer's no. Well, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm still trying to follow that question because if we accept the study, it says we should be adding 10%. Right. My question is, 2019. do we, do we oh, add 10% for next year? Okay. Okay. Well, the, the 221 that's in here is 10% already. Yeah, that 219 so, is, 221 is 10%, is it already a 10% increase? Okay. Right. So but it doesn't include top coat on brown. No, and, it, and it does include some crack sealing that we do. That we're counting someplace else. So I, I think before we, before we do the the article, if we say we're going to do all this stuff, plus that top coat, we need to figure out what that okay. top coat is. So my my <coughs> motion is strictly limited to policy. Yep. And okay, I'm yep. only asking yeah. for a vote on accepting. The plan for a year. I'm all set to vote. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Now, from there, what is it? What is the paving warrant article yeah, look like yeah. for 2019? Now we have to make and, the sausage. Yep. Yep. In in my mind, in what it looks like is you take the crack seal out because that's normal maintenance. That takes it down to, to about two hundred and ten thousand. Yeah. Right. Uh, which includes chip seal, full depth reclamation, and overlay pieces here. And then you've got to 
find what the cost of the overlay on Brown Road is. We'll deal with that as well. And the fifty thousand dollar reconstruction. The fifty thousand reconstruction. Yes, exactly. So I see that we're we're going to be going up. We can up, up a little bit, right. but and better to go there. Um, definitely better to go there. So try to increase the budget. Because we already increased the budget. So it, you know, what's what's the overlay? The top coat on Brown Road. We don't have that estimate yet. Okay. I thought we would. I didn't yep. ask for it. Okay. Yeah. For Brown Road, you need to know the overlay and the edges. Correct. You're right. You need to yeah. ask. Can oh, I thought we did the edges. Right? I know, but if you do an overlay, you got to do it again. Oh, I see. Yep. That was <coughs> like seven thousand. Right. And, right. and can we? Oh, we got to do it on the rest of them too. That's correct. So we're, That's we're correct. going to be way off on this number. Well, there's no gravel edges. Can you know, configured in with her mm -hmm. numbers. We don't know that. Because it doesn't show it. Well, that's a, that's a question we need to ask. Yeah, we need okay. to ask her how this, she this, come up with her total. This, yeah, this uh, full depth reclamation and HMA three inches. We know that doesn't include rebuilding the base. Covers? But or or culvert to drainage. Well, that's but that's does extra. It include right? shoulders. No. But does it include the shoulders? That's the question. She told me no. Well, yeah, you, are, you asked. I her. asked him at the hearing. Let's let's verify that with her. Yeah. Sure. Actually, I think to, I do recall you asking that when we were at the. Yeah. Uh, at that. Yeah, we need to at the fire station. Yep. We yep. did ask that. Yes. Okay. So each year we'll have to look at the program as it goes forward. And adjust the actual Warner article numbers that reflect actual right. costs. Sure. Yep. That yep. works. And that's what we're going to do next. So, okay. But not yep. today. <laughs> right. and, so, and the other thing with Carol is can they please do the project when the school buses aren't running? And I'd be willing yeah, to. A quarter of a mile of OAC, and, 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 and I'd be willing to negotiate uh, non performance, like on uh, North Line Road. No, doing work in October, November is not reasonable. Oh, no. no. It's not fair for you. Brown Road, okay. No, Brown Road. Okay, you said yep. the whole time you had to confuse. Excuse me. Um, yep. We, we did, part of that was probably my fault, where we didn't know that we had, I couldn't give them the go ahead until I knew we had the money, and yep. I thought we were going to come up short. So there was a little bit of that. It's my fault, but going forward, well, if we know the number. We, we, we got our planning done a little bit better this year. Get yeah. it all lined out. Yes. So that once town meeting's done, you can pick up the phone and say, "Here's where we're at." Here's what we're doing. We Schedule want it all done. Soon. We want it all done the day after school well, goes up. Well, <laughs> well, whatever. I, I, that's, you know, schedule makes sense and, and, and works in terms of road traffic and. Yeah, like your folks and every yeah. and everything. Yeah. Jimmy is always kind of on, on, on another note. I know it's a challenge, but I did the accounting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you for your efforts. All right. The last storms have looked great. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Thank Take you, care. sir. Chief Thompson, come on down. How was your Thanksgiving? Good. Did you overeat? Of course. Good. You do know it's un American not to overeat on Thanksgiving. Yes. What are we revisiting today? Oh, nothing. Not that I know of. I hope not. Okay. Experiment policy and update. Thank you. We're going to talk about the policy. Uh, had 179 fire calls, 231 EMS calls, 24 service calls, 24 special details for a total of 456, 20 gas furnace inspections, 10 oil burner inspections, 6 wood pellet stove inspections, 22 life safety for 58. Fire rescue units have, uh, we've been working on the gas furnace issue at Central Station. Uh, once again, both of the uh, units have been having issues with blowing the front covers off. 
uh, and that is because of the burner tubes. The burner tubes allow the fuel air mixture to enter the combustion chamber where it is uh, ignited. Just about after two years, the burner tubes are starting to deteriorate again. So basically what happens is you have this burner tube that goes in and it has like a material on it right around the uh, beginning of the, the base, the material is deteriorating and making an opening and it makes things too rich, which in turn puts too much gas in and blows the covers off. Okay. Those uh, burners. So we're having explosions in there instead yes. of control burns. Basically, and explosions at the fire department. Yeah. And the lifespan is like two and a half years. Well, there is no there, lifespan there on any, them. Is so there a, a one-year warranty part? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Are there alternative burner tubes? Uh, no. With with there, those, there are have. alternative. Uh, there are alternative furnaces, furnaces. but uh, yeah. um, we were they're high efficient furnaces. Obviously, yeah. they're. They're made to operate, you know, very efficiently. But all the efficiency savings is lost in burner tubes. Yes, that is correct. Um, that that is what I am seeing is that uh, you know by the time you replace the two burner tubes, it's about two thousand dollars each time that you have to take care of that uh, issue between uh, the tubes, which are about five hundred dollars a piece, and them coming up to take care of the issue and originally diagnosing the stuff and the other parts that go along with with everything. So we'll, we'll be into that about $2,000. We are going to have someone to come in and give us an estimate for future, you know, years down the road as far as if, if things start getting worse, um, you know, what else can be done. But I did, uh, you know, I, and I have contacted the company in the past as far as the furnaces trying to see if there's any recalls, any issues out there, and no one's Maybe living up to anything. Maybe a with a different burner tube or right. an improved design, yeah. Yeah, no, no, one's, no one's living up to anything on, on those particular units. We had problems with units right from the start, as far as the company that. coming out and you know, working on them, and uh, you know, the, the main, the owners and stuff, as far as company were, were there. Um, but right now, they're they're fixed again, they're up and running, no no issues, and uh, we'll monitor them from there. But there is uh, someone coming in the next couple of days to give us an estimate of you know how expensive it would be to replace them with units that are more dependable, but maybe less efficient as far as uh, these uh, particular units. Um, so we'll keep you updated for that. Engine four is going to have all four. Uh, excuse me, it's going to have all ten of its uh, tires replaced. And that's going to cost approximately five thousand dollars, and that's through a state bid process, and it's going to be done at Belknap Tire in uh, Laconia. Boat one has been pulled f for the season. It's being kept at Central Station right now and being worked on and being cleaned. Once we can no longer launch it or find that uh, it's not uh, usable because of uh, the ice, and then we'll start using boat two. Can I ask a question? Sure. Before you go too far. Uh, yeah. How old is engine four? Engine four is a 2005. Okay. So are these the original tires? No. Okay. How often do we do tires? The, uh, the tires are between every six to eight years as far as it goes. NFPA uh, requires that you remove them at eight years. Uh, the front tires are uh, pretty worn and the back tires uh, have, a, have some life left in them. However, you know, after... You get flexibility issues with it. Rubber yeah, a, after, uh, after six or seven years, you start looking at them as far as being weather cracked and stuff like that. Uh, to me, it didn't make sense to leave them on in the middle <coughs> and make another trip over and have to do it, you know, when, you know down the road and in a couple you, months. And you have money budgeted to do yes. this, right? Yep. Good. Thank you. Yep. So we, we do them all at once and then we keep track from there. Um, <coughs> it looks like that, uh, you know, in the life expectancy of the truck, we replace the tires, uh, you know, between we have the original set, we've replaced them you know, once on the truck. So probably 
three sets of tires go the life expectancy of the, of the truck. And the front tires, uh, they're what's called the flotation tire. They're fairly large tires, so they're, they're really expensive compared to the, the rear tires. So. The following individuals uh, went to an ambulance consortium meeting on 10-24-18 at the Moulton Grove Fire Station. Uh, select Chair Bill Markison, Caleb Pike, Skip Galvin, Bob McWhorter, and myself. It uh, could be uh, several months before we hear back from the consortium, which consists of Moultonboro, Meredith, Center Harbor, and Sandwich. The process seems very uh, complicated to become part of because there are so many different boards of selectmen and uh, people that are involved uh, that have to make their agreement. You know, all the towns have to agree to accept you. All the different boards have to agree, and that takes time, as you as you know. Did you get a copy of their intermunicipal agreement yet? I have not received that yet. Okay. And I'll I'll talk with Chief Benston today to see uh, where that is uh, where that is at. I do not see a great cost savings uh, for the town. It uh, looks like that there would be between five and six thousand uh, dollars savings possibly with a contract uh, for for us, but that would be up to them to make the decision. They were talking about possibly a $30,000 savings, but that was between all the towns, and that would be up to them to make the decision of who got what as far as savings was. I would uh, suggest that we budget $192,497.19 for the 2019 ambulance contract for the one-year contract. Moultonboro currently pays $194,840 for an ambulance with a dedicated medic, and I'll give you more information as, uh, as we get it uh, uh, with that. You've gotten a quote here from Jamie on the one-year contract, but do we have the actual contract? Uh, we do not uh, until we say, we this, say is what we this is what we want to do, then, uh, but they'll, they'll give us a, a contract that, uh, that you want it. Our current contract, we have the, I don't want to say the option, but there's some flexibility on an ambulance coming from Correct. two directions. So what, what happens when we become part of the consortium, we no longer have a guaranteed ambulance. It will come if it's available. And we're not sure if it no longer will be coming from Wolfboro, if that's the case, or how it will be if it will just come from Moulinboro because we're, we're now, if we're part of the consortium, we're now part of that side. Of so Moulinboro is paying $2,000 approximately more than we pay and getting an ambulance there. Is that, I'm, I'm wondering why that number is on this report. So I, I just wanted to give you an idea of what they pay for for under the a, consortium that under the consortium as far as it goes okay. um, they they are supposedly guaranteed an ambulance however from what I see there's no guarantee for that amount of money that that ambulance is going to be available um, because is it housed in Baltimore? there's two housed in Moulton okay. two housed in Meredith and two housed in, uh, well, there's a couple more housed in Meredith as far as that goes, because that's their, their that's base. Uh, two housed in Wolfboro. But there are two in Moultonboro that one of them basically is our unit, you know, type of thing. And, and one of the ones in Wolfboro is our unit, right? right? So Depending on which one's available or what part of the town. Um, certainly one of the challenges I became aware of as we sat and talked with these folks is the geography. To cover us currently with response, uh, Stewart's uses two units. One coming out of the Wolfboro side that covers basically the south half of town and one coming out of the Moultonboro end that covers the north half of town. Correct. And uh, uh, so if, if we were to be part of the consortium uh, and that asset becomes a dedicated asset out of 
Moldboro instead of the half ambulance we have coming out of Moldboro today, then, then you got nothing for the South Abba town. Then, then you have an extended time uh, response time to get, I mean, let's face it, if you're going out to the end of Tuftamaro Neck and you're coming from Moldboro Fire Station, that's a, that's a bit of a hike. That's a draw. So it's, it's certainly uh, a factor to consider as we, as we look at. Uh, yeah. Hey, right now, I think that we have, you know, obviously the best of both worlds. We have a unit that's guaranteed that's coming in. Uh, we've had an example of uh, um, incidents that you're, you're going to run into to multiple calls. Uh, this past weekend, uh, we were all the way down to Bennett Farm Road. We had a call come in from Neil Hill, all the way to the top of Neil Hill Road. Uh, at the same time. We were already at Bennett Farm, so we diverted the ambulance uh, from Stewart's to Neil Hill. Uh, it would have been better if we, with a four-wheel drive, could have gone to Neil Hill, uh, because their ambulance got stuck uh, there, and we transported out with the, uh, the rescue to them, got them uh, out as far as it goes, and they got them transported. But, um, it, we knew that there was possibly an issue with, with So they don't run four-wheel drive units? No. Everything is two-wheel drive. Yeah. Uh, because they do, you know, they, they do so much traveling yeah. as far as highway-wise and transport. Yeah. Um, with us, it's, it's a no-brainer that, uh, that you have four-wheel drive. We also, uh, we also, that same week, transported someone from Ledge Hill Road uh, due to their uh, issue with the driveway. We were able to get up into the driveway with the, the four-wheel drive rig and get them out safely and transport them to, to Huggins. Um, and they had no issues with, with us doing that, but it was just safer for, for everyone in that particular case. But it's worked out very well. You've as covered as all the bases, Chief. Having that, so. Um, so yeah, I, I would recommend that we look at a one-year contract and then coming down the road, you can see whatever changes that are coming into. That's when their contracts all expire too, right? Uh, not necessarily. There's, yeah, there's the sourcing's two well, years out. I if the sourcing's yeah. two years well, out. Well, there's more flexibility, right. correct? Yeah. So. Uh, the well, fire. I guess with respect to the consortium, one of the things that came out of the conversation between Stewart's and the consortium and us at that meeting was that while our contract and the consortium's contract don't align, it doesn't necessarily prevent, if we end up going that direction, making a transition at some point in time right. between during the contract and, and just making an adjustment there. It's like, it's not like, you know, you, you're, because Stewart's is the provider to us Correct. as well as the consortium, it, it can be a running handoff at any point in time yep. if it makes sense, which I think is terrific because then you're not under the gun. It's like, I got, got to have this deadline, right. things aren't quite right, we'll jump, mm -hmm. you know, or, or we got to wait three years. So I, I thought that was very, very, at any point in time. very positive that, that if it makes sense, yeah. but again, uh, it, it looked like a big change in how things would operate for Tufton Borough for a uh, small pre savings. pretty small pretty savings. insignificant uh, amount of savings. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but I think that we have you know we need to look at all the continue, options. Continue, continue to, to, continue look, at, to yeah, look at that. Yeah, right yeah. and all those things absolutely. All right, uh, fire, fire safety day went well at the school on 1015. Car one, the 2010 three quarter ton Suburban is back from Western Auto Body. It had some rust repairs completed and water spots removed from the windows and hood. It also had the driver's side door gasket replaced for uh, everything totaled $896.18 and the repairs came out excellent. Uh, Tufton Road Fire Rescue, New Hampshire Division Three, New Hampshire Co-op, and the uh, Highway Department uh, responded to multiple calls on 1027 
uh, at approximately 21.56 to 10.28 to uh, 8 a.m. All units worked together to try to keep the roads open uh, due to the northeast windstorm that passed through the area. There were multiple reports of trees and wires uh, down throughout town. All departments worked uh, throughout the night uh, to make the roads passable by 8 a.m. the next morning. And uh, um, things uh, went well with that. was uh, for procurement policy. Mm -hmm. Now you went to a meeting. Okay, yes, right? I, I went to the meeting. The meeting was informative, <laughs> but I don't, know, I don't know if it would, it, yes, it was very dry and the gentleman told us that it would be dry right to, from the beginning, which, plus it was during the, uh, uh. the downpour that it was, uh, there was three different towns representative represented at that meeting. Uh, so there was a total of, uh, I think, four of us, because one town sent two people. And then the, uh, oh, actually. The next day, I think that there was, you know, during the day was a, a better, Turn out as far as people because that uh, particular meeting was was booked. So basically, uh, there was I had five different procurement policies that uh, Karen provided that uh, that you guys had uh, seen and looking at all of the different procurement policies uh, the town of Effingham's seemed to be the most simple and uh, the, one of the better policies as far as uh, uh, wording through uh, Adobe we were able to remove you know work with that particular policy instead of reinventing the wheel and give you a, a basic uh, idea of what it would look like if, uh, if we had basically the same policy. The, uh, the next two pages are some of the RSAs that go along with the procurement policies. One thing that we did notice as uh, we were going through the different uh, uh, policies where they were uh, a few years older some of the amounts have changed as far as uh, what uh, what uh, what the uh, the different RSA say. So we just changed those uh, amounts to make the uh, make them you know 2018 compliant. Mm -hmm. And this is something that you can take and look over. See what you think, and I, I would most definitely obviously have uh, the town attorney look at anything along that lines and, and do it. Well, it, it's, it's certainly important that whatever we put together in terms of a purchasing policy is something that works the fans the are going to be happy yep. with. In, in turn, so we don't run up against the issue we did before, but it also has to work for us. Correct. Uh, uh, some of the town's policies that I looked at are very elaborate. Uh, yes. And, you know, every time you want to buy a box of tissues, you end up having to go through, you Sometimes. know, 87 steps. Yep. Uh, I'm exaggerating, of course. Well, it was pretty close. But <laughs> there are. So. Yeah, I think uh, the simpler it is, the better. In in most cases, uh, there there as you said, there were some policies that were very elaborate, and I think it was two hundred dollars or more. You had to have bids on on different stuff, and that's quite a 
for the process. Well, for a small town like us, we have to recognize that uh, when you go through competitive uh, pricing on things that you buy, it, uh, if you don't have somebody on staff that has a, a significant amount of time to devote to that, you can't get it done. Right. Uh, and uh, but there's a. I think Tufton Grove has slipped the other way a little too far on occasion. For instance, there was no bidding at all on the library that I could see. You know, we need to enforce a procurement policy that's reasonable. Right. Obviously, mm -hmm. $100 purchases or $200 purchases or $1,000 purchases probably not doable. But when you get into projects or equipment, I mean, I don't think Jim Bean put that dump truck out to bid. I know he didn't. He just went out and bought one. The ten wheeler that we currently have at the townhomes, he just found a deal on it and bought it. That's really not the way you go about doing things. I mean, you're, the board at the time was satisfied with the purchase, but really we need to be a little more astute about mm -hmm. it. Well, that whole process was, um, <clears throat> again, the amount that was brought up to include a town meeting to replace it was was under under what we needed to do to get there right. um, but you're right yes so there's if, a, if if, there's if, if we may if we if we plan and manage things better mm -hmm. then uh, yeah. then then we it uh, worked for Lane Pond better. Road it worked for the two boat ramps and it worked for Sodom Road yeah, it, works. Case, it, it works you, you and are, if, if you better procure and follow so we can blame it on the chief <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. 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 All right. The only so, other thing I just wanted to talk about was revenue. How are we coming on our revenue for the ambulance? As far as uh, um, I, I meant to bring okay. an update, and I, I didn't. Because we're going to start that. looking at revenue at some point okay. in that budget process, and I'll, we want to see that. Do you want me to turn that into Karen? Sure. Yeah. 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 We can, she'll just stick it in correspondence for next yep. week and then we can uh, have it to look at. Yep. All right. Good. All right. Uh, Any, anything else that you have? That's it. Have well, a quiet Thank you. All right. Thank Thank you. You, too. you too. All right. <laughs> All right. The only other item that I see uh, planning, and, planning and zoning budget. Karen? Planning and zoning budget. Mm -hmm. Should be in our is, is it in there? Yeah. What like last week? Jackie wants to increase public notices by 500 back to her original request. Uh, she said some expenditures weren't noted. So she wants to go back up to 2000 Yeah, and we folks reduced it. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Do you need a copy? Want one? I, I, I guess I need a copy. I if I could just right. make a copy after, okay. that'd be great. So, back up to 34.50 from 29.50. Yep. Right. And she's not in here to defend herself. She, I did see her come by. She's not typically in on Mondays, but I did speak to her about it. She has some outstanding expenditures that are coming forward that aren't included in those numbers yet. She, yeah. When I saw her last week, she said she's. She thinks she's going to need every bit of the two thousand dollars this year for public notices. For public notices, yeah. yeah. Though she's never gotten close to that. Amount. Thirteen was twelve hundred dollars. Fourteen right. was a thousand. Right. And she and I had a brief conversation. She said, "Yeah, well, uh, we've had a lot of hearings, and we're going to sp spend the money. yeah the the uh, uh, the number that was in there." So far this year was, I don't know, a couple months old, and there have been a bunch of notices since then, so she is requesting to go back up to 2000 in there. So I'll entertain a motion. Okay, I'll move that we increase the, or we make the planning and zoning budget 4191, $3,250. This is the ZBA portion, yeah. ZBA. All right, so. yep. And uh, second? Second. 
All right. Any further discussion? Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any other business for today? Yes, there's a couple folders there that are marked. Yes. I double checked on all our job performance reviews, and the Leanne needs hers done by the her anniversary dates in December. She has two supervisors, the chairman of the planning board and the chairman of the uh, conservation commission. Okay. Other than that, they're, they're all up to date. All right. All right. It looks like we have, we do have some signature issues for today. Uh, medical rate. Signature, is that right? This is on the health saving. Yeah. No, this is on the what we voted on. Oh, the renewal. The renewal. Right. Mm -hmm. The other day. So yeah. I'll make a motion with the chairman sign. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. And then we have uh, summary of forest stewardship plan for current use assessment. This is for 16-2-9. Uh, this is a, a, an update to their current use. So, and did Rob review that thing? Yeah, I put a, a note on there. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I'll make a motion that we sign. Second. Uh, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Expensive swimming pool going in down there on Window Blow Road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which which road was it with uh, a citizen came in and talked about the pavement being torn up? Yeah, it was uh, Eagle Man. Yeah. Eagle. Yeah, but it, it's beyond no, no, the it's not. Road. No, it's not Window Blow. Window Blow. Window Blow. Yeah, but it's beyond the. I don't think that's, I think that's private road. I, I didn't see, I thought it was private road. Yeah. No, the section that he was talking about is not private. Oh, okay. Really? It's before you get to the, was before you get to the corner. Uh, and I think it's, uh, I, I meant to mention it to, uh, uh, it's shown as yellow in the current. This is your uh, advertisement for Parks and Rec. Right, Direct. I incorporated her description into right. an ad. I want to make sure it looked okay. And All the right. dates and everything as well. And uh, it, it looks fine to me. We're not going to advertise it yet, though, right? Um, you agreed to at your last meeting, actually. I'm sorry? You folks agreed to advertise it. Well, we agreed, if I remember correctly, is <coughs> after it passes the budget committee. After the budget passes the budget committee. Oh, and it did, so. It so. did? Yeah. Did we go through that on yeah. the last meeting? Yeah. Okay. I guess yeah, because you had mentioned how they'd have to work on any it passed, done things. So you was it past the budget committee or the, the final hearing? What, 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 what was your mind? I'm well, flexible we either way. We don't hire anybody until right. After right. Right. So we're here anyway, but so so we're, we're not going to be. This individual wouldn't be hired until what? Probably after town meeting, but we want to have candidates. Well, we want to see what's out there. Obviously. That's what you discussed at your last right. meeting. Yeah, yeah, putting it out right. now to. All right. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, Are you all wait? I mean, I well, I I, I, I I think it's it's good to get a, a handle on it. But I guess the only thing that I wonder at this point is if we advertise now and we get a bunch of candidates in now and then we say, well, yeah, we're looking at starting in April. Right. Uh, if we're... Uh, we just lose them. Yeah, yeah, you lose those folks. So, um, 
I, I mean, I'm fine with putting an ad in it. Just well, to just see what's I mean, up. There's, there was some pushback, although only football by one individual, but I think yeah. whether yes. there'll be more pushback, we yes. certainly should. I have no problem that. pausing. Right, let's pause. why, why don't we do it right after the holidays, okay? Yeah. I mean, I think if we put it out there in January and we're looking for responses by something, early February or something like that, we'll have a better feel. I, I, I mean, it's... Sure. Somebody's looking for work today, they're probably looking for work today. Uh, all right, is there anything else we have to deal with today? Um, encumbering parks and rec money, is that in there too? Um, I see something. Yeah. The, all right, so this is, all right. So, all right. This is for, the this is, this is for um, all right. This is for permits for the beach reconstruction, right? right. right. So, so she wants to encumber any her leftover budget for that. It could, she doesn't, it's expected to be due by the end of this year, but she said everything's been delayed, so she expects it will be in next year. Okay, so do we. It's an expense for next year. So. Do we need to encumber at this early date? I mean. We, we don't. We only need to encumber it before the end, before twelve thirty one. Right, exactly. So the advantage to encumbering it was that we did a bunch of encumbering in yep. the last meeting in December. Yep. Um, the the challenge is if we remember to do it then. Yeah. So I, I mean I'm yeah. fine in encumbering it now, but uh, so moved. so it's four thousand okay. four four thousand six hundred and twenty five uh, twenty six dollars. And forty six cents. Uh, is that her total remaining budget? Uh, After expected bills. Yeah. No, it is not the total remaining budget. Mm -hmm. She's she's got another three thousand in there. Okay. She expects a bill. I think. Did I write like what her expected what she has minus what she expects for bills and then should be the remaining budget after that, right? She expects one more bill from White Mountain? Well, uh, I thought, I, I, think, I think it's on handwritten notes. It's not, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff written on here, but it's not clear to me what. Uh, like, may I look at it for a second? Maybe I can explain it. Maybe I understand my own notes better. <laughs> Let's see. So she has 77.31.45. She expects an invoice for 405 for the toilets, 2700 from White Mountain, leaving 462645 after those bills. And, and mm -hmm. what are we encumbering it against? Oh, um, thank, yes, thank you. So the, um, right, we've, we've, we've we been can't given just... by, right, White Mountain survey gave us a quote. Um, it is here, excuse me. Yeah, four thousand, three thousand for the shoreland impact, and four, excuse me, and a thousand for the wetland gap. So, so she's 4, expecting. She, you know, there. It's an estimate, though. It's not a solid number. So that's why she requested to encumber. Well, here's the whole here's. 46. Yeah, but we need a contract to encumber against, not just an estimate. We need it. We need an obligation there to. Right. So, before we encumber, we get the. We need to fix the money. contract yes. from him. Then we can encumber against that. Okay. Okay. So and, we did and, talk with Diane about it. And, 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 and I and I talked with Gina a little bit last week, and maybe I wasn't clear enough. She was. She said, "Well, I need to encumber." I said, "Yeah, that's fine, but she said, I need to find out how much I have left." And, but yeah, the other piece is we have to have an act, an active obligation to okay. encumber against. We yes. can't just say, "Well, we we know we're going to need to spend it." So. Right. All right. I think I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah. I